Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for another video in my history series where today I'm going to be talking about Pocahontas. Now we've all seen Disney's Pocahontas haven't we? It's always been one of my favourite Disney movies. The strong and brave Pocahontas, daughter of the chief, falls in love with John Smith who has arrived on the boats with the English. She then saves his life from her father and ensures peace between the English settlers and the Native Americans. That's the Disney version of the story, but sadly the true story of Pocahontas isn't quite as happy and romantic as we may have been led to believe. In fact, it was rather tragic. And today we're going to take a look at that story. I do feel like I need to get a quick disclaimer before I get into this video. And there are actually multiple different accounts of the true Pocahontas and her life. And all of the sources contain slightly different facts. And I suppose that just comes with the territory of history, I'm afraid. So I always take care to try and ensure all of my facts are correct and that I'm telling the story as true as I can. But of course, sometimes it's not all that easy. I mean, even something like Pocahontas' true name is reported differently in almost every source I used. So I'm going to do my best, but if you know the facts are slightly different, then just let me know down below. Um, but before we get into this video, I'd like to thank Magellan TV for once again sponsoring. Magellan TV is a documentary streaming site with hundreds of different documentaries about a huge range of topics. I love documentaries and I'm sure you do too if you're watching this video. And I really cannot recommend Magellan TV enough. They have everything from true crime to science, history, nature and a bit of everything in between with new programmes added weekly that can be watched anywhere on your TV, laptop and mobile. It's compatible with Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Google Play and iOS and loads of the programmes are available in 4K. As always, I'll end this by giving you a couple of my favourite documentaries that I've watched in the past week. Um, the first I want to recommend is The Rain Man Twins, about autistic identical twins Flo and Kay Lyman, who have memorised every single day of their lives. It is truly fascinating. And then there's Women on Death Row as well, following five women on death row in the USA and giving just an insight into their life and crimes which again is just fascinating, would highly recommend you go and check out Magellan TV. So our story begins around 1596 when Pocahontas was likely born. Even her birth year is an estimate, but it was likely 1596 or very close to that. Her given name at birth is actually Amanute, although she was sometimes called Matawaka as she grew older. Um, I'm going to put any complicated words or names on the screen, so even if I completely butcher the pronunciation, at least you can see how it's written. Pocahontas was actually her nickname after her mother, and there's lots of different interpretations as to what Pocahontas means. Um, some say playful one, or ill-behaved child, or some version of this. Pocahontas was the favourite daughter of Wahunsanaka, the chief Powhatan, who was the chief of about 30 native tribes in and around what is now known as Virginia. It had a population of about 25,000 people, and the Powhatans called their homeland Senkamoko. Now there's nothing written about Pocahontas' mother, who she was named after, so a lot of historians theorise that she was likely to have died in childbirth, so Pocahontas would have been raised by her father, the chief. Being the daughter of the chief, of course, had its perks, and she was heralded as one of the most beautiful. The chief had a lot of different children by a lot of different mothers, trying to expand the gene pool. But despite being the daughter of the chief, she still would have had to have learned how to work, and she would have been held to a higher standard than the rest. Men and women had different roles, and Pocahontas would have had to have learned how to build the houses, farm, cook, collect water, make clothing, gather firewood, and make all the standard household items, mats, baskets, pots. These were all skills a Pocahontas would have learned as a child, ready for when she became an adult of 15 years old, as Powhatan culture dictated. Um, like I said, as she was daughter of the chief, she would have been held to higher standards than most. Um, but despite this, she would have had a pretty free childhood. I mean, her nickname literally spoke of the fact that she was a playful and mischievous child. All children of the Powhatan were closely watched and cared for by members of the tribe collectively. But Pocahontas was a bit of a mischievous one. She'd run away and she'd be seen doing cartwheels in the distance. And she was just hard to like keep hold of. So our little Pocahontas was likely around 10 years old when the English colonists arrived in Senkamoko in the spring of 1607 and the colonists went on to establish Jamestown. 
Um, along with the colonists arrived 27 year old John Smith, a name which is arguably as famous as Pocahontas's. But the story doesn't go as the cartoon has led people to believe. There was never actually any romantic or love connection between the two. If there was, it's more than disgusting considering that Pocahontas was literally a child at this point. She was 10 years old. Um, but the two are historically linked. Um, years later, when no one was left around to dispute all the facts, John Smith actually wrote about how Pocahontas rescued him from being executed by her father. And that is something the cartoon does depict, but all may not be as it seemed. Um, Jamestown soon runs out of supplies, and instead of just using the land to grow their own food, um, John Smith reportedly ordered his troops to go into the native villages and hold guns to people's heads, demanding food supplies. In 1608, John Smith is captured by the chief's younger brother, I'm not even going to try and attempt to pronounce his name, I'll be here, um, and brought to the main village. And the capital of the Powhatan chiefdom was Werowocomoco, um, which was where he was brought to face the chief. John Smith tells the story of what happened next as follows. He says he was brought in in front of Chief Powhatan and two large stones were placed on the ground, his head forced down onto them. A warrior raises his club to smash in John's head, but before that could happen, Pocahontas reportedly rushes in and places her head upon his, immediately stopping the execution. According to him, he was saved by Pocahontas. But there's actually a lot of debate as to whether or not this actually happened. Um, some sources say that the children were not allowed in the adult meetings, particularly when the chief was involved. So it's highly unlikely that Pocahontas would have even been there at this meeting. Um, others say that this actually was an elaborate adoption ceremony, that John Smith's life was never actually in danger at all, it was just a ceremony. Um, but of course John Smith wouldn't have known that his life wasn't in danger, he didn't speak the same language, and to him these people were savages. Or maybe it did all happen exactly as he said, but this seems to be one of the least likely scenarios. Um, but if his story isn't true, why would he make it up? Um, it could just be as simple as he wanted a cool story to tell of his time in the exciting new world when he returned home to England. And as you're going to find out in the rest of this video as well, Pocahontas became a pretty big name. People knew of Pocahontas, so maybe John Smith just wanted a cool story to tell about, oh, I knew Pocahontas when she was a child and this is what happened. Afterwards, the chief tells John Smith that he is now a part of their tribe and a friendship actually begins to form between the two. And once Smith returns home to Jamestown, the chief actually sends gifts of food to the starving English. Pocahontas would go along with the food deliveries and would often be seen playing with the English children. It's likely that the tribe sent Pocahontas along with the food deliveries as a symbol of peace. I mean, like, look, we're sending you food and we're sending a child along with it, an innocent human. The blossoming relationship between the English and the Native Americans also blossomed under the threat of the Spanish who were threatening to invade. And so this kind of like enforces this alliance between the two. The chief actually grew to like John Smith so much that John Smith was given the position of Werewants, or the leader of the colonists. As time passed though, this relationship slowly begins to deteriorate. They are essentially trying to live harmoniously on land that the English had stolen, and this causes some friction. By the winter of 1608-1609, the Powhatan was struggling to harvest enough food to keep their own people alive, let alone the English as well. So Chief Powhatan ceases trading with the English, which as you can imagine, they didn't take too well. And the English began threatening and burning down villages to get what they felt like they were just entitled to. The Powhatan tries to negotiate with John Smith, but it doesn't go all too well. According to Smith's stories though, that night after the negotiations, Pocahontas returns to tell John Smith that her father intended to kill him. Um, but again, many historians think that this is entirely fabricated because it would have been winter and way too cold for little Pocahontas, still a child, to be sneaking around in the dead of night. And according to John Smith, after this, they didn't see each other again for a long, long time and Pocahontas stopped going to visit the English. But then again, even the fact that Pocahontas visited the English at all at Jamestown on multiple occasions is disputed. It's been worked out that her village would have been about 12 miles from Jamestown, which 
may have been too far for a child to travel, especially over the multiple bodies of water that you needed to cross to reach Jamestown. Maybe she went in that first time with food deliveries, maybe a couple of other times with food deliveries, but it's unlikely that she visited Jamestown on a regular basis just to go play with the children as some sources suggest. As a result of these failed negotiations and the rising tensions between his own tribes and the English, the chief actually moved their capital to a different place called Oropax on the Chickahominy River, which is much further inland. They need to move further inland because the English colonies are also beginning to spread and it becomes dangerous to be near these English colonies because they're attacking and burning down villages. And this is where our story begins to get even darker. Now the native tribeswomen felt more than comfortable walking around wearing very little clothing in the summer. They'd have exposed breasts and very little on the bottom. The children would likely walk around wearing nothing at all. This wasn't sexual for them, it was a normal thing to do and nobody in the tribes would bat a single eyelid over it. Of course, the English men just couldn't control themselves around almost naked females, apparently. If these breasts were on display, then it meant that these women were being intentionally sexual, and therefore, they must be raped. Honestly, it's concerning how we're now over 500 years in the future, and that mindset still seems scarily familiar. Women and children would literally be kidnapped and taken away to be raped women and children. The English didn't do anything to stop these men either. In English culture at the time, this was normal. Sex was expected, part of a woman's reason for being. But in Powhatan culture, rape was punishable by death. So the Native Americans just couldn't understand why nothing was being done. By this point, Pocahontas was coming of age. She was a young woman. She had married Kukuam at the age of 14 or 15, who was the younger brother of a different tribal chief, the Patawomek tribe, and soon Pocahontas becomes pregnant by Kukuam. The fact that Kukuam was not a chief himself, nor did he hold any huge amount of power, um, means that it's actually likely that Pocahontas actually married for love rather than convenience. Pocahontas is not mentioned in English accounts again for a number of years, until around 1613. Things were about to get a lot worse for poor Pocahontas, as Captain Samuel Argyll had discovered that the chief Powhatan's favourite daughter was living with the Patawomek tribe. The relationship between the English and the Powhatan was still really poor and he thought that by kidnapping Pocahontas it could give him the leverage he needed to change that. They wouldn't attack if they knew that the English had Pocahontas. So Argyll comes up with a plan and he convinces the Patawomek to cooperate with him, telling them, promising them, that Pocahontas would only be taken temporarily, that he just wanted to cause some peace between the English and the Powhatans, um, and they set a trap for Pocahontas. It's been reported over and over again that Argyll actually gave the chief of the Patawomek tribe a copper pot in trade for Pocahontas. So this tribe reportedly literally handed over Pocahontas for this copper pot. Um, and although Argyll did actually give the chief a copper pot, it wasn't really a trade. Um, they'd already agreed to help him take Pocahontas, so this copper pot was just a token present to the chief of the Patawomeks. And so the plan takes shape. Pocahontas was to accompany the chief and his wife to see Captain Argyll's ship. And before leaving, Pocahontas had actually given her child to one of the women in the village to look after for the day. And that's the last time she would see her child. The wife of the chief pretends to want to go aboard the ship, but the chief said he'll only allow it if Pocahontas can join her. At first, Pocahontas refuses. She's not feeling comfortable with going on this random ship, but she eventually caves when the chief's wife starts crying. Once on board the ship though, of course, she wasn't allowed to leave. Some sources say that once Kukuan returned to the village that night, he was killed by the colonisers. Other sources say he carried on living and raised their child. Um, Pocahontas was taken to Jamestown before being moved to Henrico. Um, the chief Powhatan heard of his favourite daughter's capture and immediately agrees to many of the English's demands, but they don't seem to want to return her. Um, they put Pocahontas under the charge of a reverend and force her to learn the English language and customs as well as convert her to Christianity. They wanted her to become civilised. The English thought of the Native Americans as barely human. They tell Pocahontas repeatedly that her father isn't going to come and save her because he does not love her, he doesn't care. 
And reports say that she became depressed, fearful and withdrawn. And eventually she actually becomes so bad that her captors actually allow her elder sister, uh, Matachana, to come and speak to her. Pocahontas tells her sister that she's been raped by the Englishmen, which I've already mentioned is one of the worst possible crimes in Powhatan society. It was almost unheard of in the society because the punishment was so severe and so quick, instant death. So it's whilst being held captive and being forced to convert to Christianity that Pocahontas meets John Rolfe and they soon marry. The Powhatan consent to the marriage, thinking they would keep Pocahontas safe. Pocahontas and Rolf's marriage was not one of love, but one of convenience for Rolf. Jamestown was failing and it was not looking to become profitable at all, which would basically mean that they would lose their support from England and that they'd likely have to admit defeat and go back home. Rolf actually had a tobacco business that was failing and he thought that by aligning himself with Pocahontas and therefore the Powhatans, they could assist his business. They could teach him how to grow tobacco in this region. And the marriage did lead to the Peace of Pocahontas, which was a very short lull in the conflicts, for a short amount of time anyway. Um, but also the Virginia Company of London, which had funded the settling of Jamestown, thought they could use Pocahontas to their advantage. If they got her to marry an Englishman, they could take her back to England and show how successful they were doing in this new world. Hey, look at us taking these uncivilised people and converting them to Christianity, our way of life. Aren't we so great? I mean, history kind of sucks, but so does the current day. Pocahontas and John Rolfe have a son together and they name him Thomas Rolfe. Although some of the reports state that Thomas was actually the result of the rapes Pocahontas had endured before her marriage. In 1616, the Rolfe family travelled to England. By this point, Pocahontas has fully converted to Christianity and she's been baptised with her new white name, Rebecca. She's taken to England for the purpose of raising money for the Virginia Company to show off how well they were doing over in Jamestown. The bringing of Pocahontas to England to show friendship with native nations was the key to continued financial support for the colonists. But of course, there was no friendship there. Pocahontas had been kidnapped and raped and forced to convert to Christianity and forced to marry an Englishman. There was nothing good about what was going on. During her visit to England, Pocahontas actually meets John Smith once again and she scolds him for how he acted as Wirrawans, the leader of the colonists. Her father treated him as a friend. John actually called the chief father and John had turned around and stabbed him in the back, betraying the Powhatan people. And Pocahontas, ever brave, tells him off for his behaviour, in English. In March 1617, Pocahontas and her family are getting ready to return to Virginia. The boat sets sail down the Thames River, but Pocahontas suddenly falls violently ill. Strange when she seemed to be in good health for most of her trip. Some speculate she was poisoned, but she's in a new land and she's exposed to a huge amount of new diseases that she would never have come into contact with before. She has to be quickly taken ashore to Gravesend, England, where she soon dies aged just 21 in March 1617. She's buried at St George's Church in Gravesend, her memory honoured with a life-size bronze statue. A nice gesture, but I'm sure she probably would have remained in her own country with her own people. Um, after Pocahontas' death, Rolf decides that he wants nothing to do with their son. He quickly returns back to Virginia and leaves their son with relatives, likely his brother Henry in England. The news spreads back to the Powhatan people of Pocahontas' death and they are devastated. Within a year, Chief Powhatan dies, reportedly of a broken heart. Thomas Rolf stayed in England and went on to marry and have many children of his own. Um, little was actually known of Pocahontas' first child with Cookoam. Sources interchangeably refer to them as a son or a daughter. It seems like the overwhelming idea from today's Patawomex is that they actually had a daughter who they named Kaoki, who was raised by the tribe after the kidnap of Pocahontas. There are hundreds of living descendants of Pocahontas today. If you're one of them, if you're a descendant of Pocahontas, I would love for you to leave a comment down below. And there's the story of Pocahontas. Not the beautiful love story that Disney would have you believe. It's more a story of tragedy and betrayal and colonisation 
she deserved better as did her entire people thank you so much for tuning in to today's video if you enjoy my history series and i do have a whole playlist on my channel if you want to go check that out and as always a huge thank you to magellan tv for sponsoring i highly recommend you go check them out if you love a good documentary um let me know down below if there's any other history cases that you would like to see me cover and i'll be sure to add it to my list um thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe to my channel and i will see you in the next one bye guys